Once we have NGRX Store installed, the first thing that we need to do is start defining the application state. So we are going to create here a store folder. This is really a great place to start implementing our store solution. Let's simply define here a custom type definition, which is the application state. This state will be composed of primitive types like participants, messages, etc. So classes that are defined here on the model folder. Let's define here a type that we will name application state. The application state typically has two components. A part of the state is the data that we are storing. So the threads, the messages, the participants, that is purely the data, the slice of the database that we are keeping in memory. Another part of the state is not directly the data, but it's, for example, what is the currently selected thread that we want to highlight? So what is the ID of the current selected thread? Or also, what is the ID of the currently selected user? So that is another type of state that we also want to put in our store. So what we usually do is we are going to define here a couple of other files. One will be the store data. So this will be a custom type that will define what is the data that we store exactly in our store. The second custom type that we want to define is the UI state. The UI state will, for example, store what is the currently selected user. And so the application state will be composed of two properties. The first property is the UI state, which is of type UI state. And the second property is store data, which is of type store data. It's important to keep this distinction from the very beginning of our store implementation. Let's start by defining our user interface state, our UI state. So going back to the screenshot of our application, our application really has two elements of UI state, the currently selected user and the currently selected thread. So let's jump into UI state and define these two properties. So the first property is the user ID, which will be a number. And the second property is the current thread ID, which will also be a number. Now let's define the store data. So what will the store contain? So the store data is a small in-memory database on the client side. So we should define the data in our store to have a similar structure to the one that we have in our database, assuming that the database is in its normalized form. So let's open here the DB data file. What we have here is a list of participants with a key, which is the participant ID and the value, which is the participant. Then we have a similar arrangement for threads and messages. This is the way that our database is organized. So this is typical of either JSON databases like MongoDB or Firebase, but a similar arrangement occurs in relational databases. So you can imagine that participants is a database table and these are rows in a database table. And this is the primary key. Now our store data should have the same structure as the database that we are bringing to the client side, a small part of it. So we will have here a participants map and the key to this map, we are going to define it here inside square brackets. The key is a number, which is the participant ID and the value is a participant, of course. So notice that we are using the participant custom type available here in the shared folder, in the model folder. So this is our participants. The next data that we have here in memory is the threads of the user. So all of this data that is in memory in the client side is typically per user. So these are the participants for the threads that the user can see. These are the threads that the user can see. So threads per user would also be a good name. This threads property is also a map. So again, the map, the key is a number. 
and this number of course is the thread ID and the value of the map is a thread. Now a similar arrangement will happen with messages. We are going to store our messages per message ID and the value will be the message itself. So what we have here is the definition of our store data. As our application is running, we are going to bring from the backend a small part of the database that contains the data that the user can view and we are going to store it in memory on the client side. We are going to store it at a single place and we are going to notify parts of the application that want to display that data. We are going to notify them whenever a new version of the in-memory data is available. Next up, we are going to cover actions, action dispatching and reducers. It's coming right up in the next few lessons.